I do not know what the questions are. That's the question. Yeah. I thought it was going to come. Even with Bonang. Yeah. Tip Tanya Samazwai doesn't give questions. Oh, we. This is going to be scary. What's. What's. Oh jeez, no. Um, it's always been Siki. I promise you. Yeah, yeah. Nothing more. Yes. A legend. Um, I identify myself as a legend. Iconic. <laughs> I think that's too much credit. No, cut the iconic part out. Uh, I identify myself as a legend. I am a woman, a closer woman. I'm a creative and I'm a go-getter. <sighs> Jeez. Um, the fact that I need to play it forward for young black women, especially the tender ages of the teen years for young girls, I think that's what's keeping me alive. That, that, that's what wakes me up in the morning is that I'm doing it for the schoolgirl in uniform, wherever she is. When I live in a loft apartment in New York City, looking down on Times Square, um, oh, geez. <laughs> I think when I have traveled the world and I also do not have a routine, an office hours, any office hours, I would have known I've made it and working remotely from wherever I am, yeah, doing what I love. Yes, I have been saving, but I've stopped in May. So, you know, I did the whole monthly calendar thing that says, you know, you, need, you should save this much per month. Did it, but unfortunately I stopped in May. So I have to catch up for the months that are left now uh, because I'm saving for traveling, yeah. Scared. At the same time, I feel I have the opportunities, the tools, uh, but I feel vulnerable. I feel very scared, yeah. Get this postgrad out the way. <laughs> In 2018, I, um, geez guys, uh, <laughs> I want to be great. I want to have ticked off. I, I usually start off the year. I don't do resolutions, but things that I need to have completed. Uh, so I, I live intentionally. Every month I write my intentions, you know, like drink three liters of water, uh, pray, meditate. So in 2018, I have to have seen some growth because I have been living with every, I, I, each month I write new intentions. I don't do it in a full year, so I need to have seen some growth. A degree at the age of 27 years old. Um, I have conquered um, going against what my parents wanted me to do and did what I wanted to do. I have conquered speaking up especially in family gatherings, that so much my voice has been heard. So now I want that voice to be outside the confinements of my home and to be out in the world. So I have conquered to be louder. I'm sure people will say, or most people would say, there wouldn't be anything I wouldn't have done differently, but I would have listened to that inner voice when I wanted to go study what I wanted to study, because now, you know, I feel like I have delayed, but hey, it's not too late. It's perfect timing, people would say, but I wish I was at this age, at 25, having achieved what I did. But now I'm not 25, I'm 27.6. <laughs> so, um, your question again? What would you, if you could start your life all over again, what would you do differently? Straight after matric, I would have gone to fashion school. Uh, my master's, <laughs> it's twofold. Um, 
the success of e-commerce in developing countries such as South Africa, one of them. And then I would have loved to talk about the prevalence of HIV AIDS in uh, women. Yes, uh, the, yeah, the prevalence of HIV AIDS and power dynamics in relationships and women not being able to initiate to use the condom in a relationship when engaging in sexual intercourse with their partners. Whew, I am. <laughs> I am the founder of Pigment Studio. Um, I have used the tools that I have, the voice that I have um, to, to, to speak up. Uh, especially about race and the history of South Africa. Uh, Pigments has been a platform for all creatives, for all people to just put work that is daring out there and uh, see if it's received well or not. So my agenda is, um, it's women first, you know, it's black women. And also my agenda is to speak out on inequality, speak up, about inequality and um, I created these amazing bags who killed Bigon who killed Annie and those sold like hot cakes and I thought you know this was the beginning of many things yes no I haven't but I've had a lot of conversations uh, the reason why I asked that question it wasn't to get an answer it was to open up dialogue amongst ourselves especially young South Africans and uh, I, I've had a lot of people engage me especially in public spaces you know it's it's it goes deep uh, and also you know older generations telling us that that's not true this is not true this party did that, the old South African government. So I really love the engagement that uh, I, I sparked around the bags. Okay, never will I sell you something for profit. No, I am not a profit-driven business and I think that's why my business has not been make, doing well. I, I, making money is not the greatest motivation. It's changing mindsets. That's how I run my business. Um, I clean out people's wardrobes, clear it all out, and then there's a section we pile it up, give it away, sell it, or yeah, get rid of it completely, not even, uh, or mend it actually, so different categories. Clean out your whole wardrobe, and then you'll say, Siki, I'm giving you this bag for about whatever X amount, and please sell these clothes, and then you'll make a commission out of that, I'll give you money back. Uh, tips. Do, vintage has become like thrift, everything. People have started a trend around it and people are selling clothes for exorbitant amounts. And I'm like, but this you can just get out of your grandmother's wardrobe or a nice beautiful knit, but you're selling it for, you know, big amounts. So you look at all the boutique stores, Long Streets, go to Johannesburg. And you know, I saw these people downtown. And downtown is like a few meters away from where they're selling it. So how did the price change between 500 meters? Uh, so I, I, I always drive my business with love, with, with building relationships. You'll be so surprised that, I'll be honest, I'll be like, that dress won't suit you, but check out this jacket and you know, you would wear it well and I'll look at my customers. So I built relationships more than trying to treat my customers as ATMs. Trapped by Gayton McKenzie. Um, that's the book that made me um, submit my resignation letter and say, I cannot be in this hamster wheel. Yes, uh, entrepreneurship is not for everyone. I would go back to a nine to five. But it was that thing of, he's an ex-con, that's what he calls himself. And Gayton is amazing. He's my hero. And how he has just changed his life around and said he's doing this. Now he's multimillionaire and he's doing a lot. Yeah. I am reading Trevor Noah's Born a Crime. Please don't ask me why I'm reading that. I'm reading Trevor Noah's Born a Crime because of the hype on Twitter, more than anything. 
Um, and then I have just been reading like small books that I really don't remember. It's about creatives. So I don't even remember the titles because it's like quick reads. Because I was at an agency um, just working part time and um, you know, you just take things off the shelf. So those are the books that I'm reading.